Good morning and welcome to another edition of Inquisition Update. My name's Tom Fress and I'll be your host for the next hour. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. And we'll get right to the business of Inquisition Update this morning. The reading and discussion of the book, the Protestant book, Rome and Civil Liberty by James A. Wiley. Yesterday we concluded on the top of page 39 in the book of James A. Wiley relating to us a common sentiment in Protestant England at the time of the supposed... uh, erection in England of a papal government. The dividing up of the land of England into archdioceses and dioceses and over which were appointed Roman Catholic bishops as not only spiritual governors over Roman Catholics in those jurisdictions, but governors over all the people in both spiritual and temporal matters. The papacy tried to elect on the ground in opposition to the to the the legitimate government the protestant government of great britain the government of by and for the pope and as the common sentiment was in england at the time well england is protestant its queen is protestant its parliament is protestant its people are protestant and the papacy is dreaming the papacy just as well have fallen down into a fit and had dreams and visions and might as well have erected his kingdom in the air as to think that he could erect a solid foundational government in England to overthrow the, 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 the legitimate government of England. And he says, uh, James A. Wiley says, but the papacy will awake and find that it is but a dream. We dare say the times express very fairly the general mind of England on the point when it said in some such words as the following, that the return of Dr. Wiseman, that is Cardinal Wiseman, the one who brought the papal bull with him and the one who uh, divided up the land into papal jurisdictions, Dr. Wiseman, to our country with all his high-flowing titles and his bravery of office, need give us no more concern than if it had been the pleasure of his, ho- of his holiness, that is the Pope, to be deck and to be decorate the editor of the tablet in, ti- in, t- in style equally gorgeous and assign him the poison rank of Duke of Smithfield. In other words, England was paying no mind to this. Now, is that the appropriate way to assess this aggression from the papacy? This apparent attempt to take over the legitimate government, to just yawn and nod and dismiss it with a flick of the wrist as if the papacy was just dreaming? Or is this a power to be reckoned with? James A. Wiley continues in the, the, the first full paragraph on the page. It says, it was natural for us to reason in this matter, or rather in this manner, our unquestionable superiority in science, in material wealth, and in political power, the creation, as we boast, of our own skill and courage has given us an overweening sense, more perceptible to foreigners than to ourselves, of self-sufficiency and self-importance. We are the men. The, The love of liberty is in our blood. Our freedom lies safely entrenched within the double fortress of law and usage, of our social instincts and our political forms. The Pope, of course, puts his own meaning upon his own acts. But the question is, not what he understands by them, but what we understand by them. This reasoning, we grant, is very specious, but it is, we maintain, and will endeavor to show, thoroughly fallacious. It is true, 
Great Britain is not yet converted to popish to the popish faith. No one, not even Rome herself, expected that this would happen in a day. But Great Britain is at this hour nearer conversion, very considerably nearer than at the period of the papal aggression. The more one reflects, the more one is astonished at the great change which a which a very short time has sufficed to bring about. The Roman deposit, that is, the papal bull, the encyclical, the breaking up of the land into dioceses, he says the Roman deposit, like a crystallizing salt, has been adding layer after layer and expanding silently, yet continuously, from one day to another. See, it is growing, okay? Once the papacy barges in, if you open the door a crack, the papacy will barge in and make a presumptive move upon the government, and that while it is dismissed as folly, it is very, very serious, very, very systematic, very, very unrelenting, in laying layer after layer after layer of authority over its claims and making essentially like a malignant cell that once that malignancy begins to grow it begins to replicate itself and to spread and the first thing you know you begin with one malignant cell then you get a tumor and then you have a metastasy and this is what James A. Wiley is, is describing here. He says, the Roman deposit, like a crystallizing salt, has been adding layer after layer and expanding silently, yet continuously from one day to another. Look at it now. What solidity of nucleus and what goodliness of bulk. And all within a few years. In other words, the original, uh, the, the original malignancy has now turned into a tumor in England. He says the Church of Rome has nearly quadrupled her priesthood. She has quadrupled her members, quadrupled her funds, quadrupled her edifices. She is now as good as endowed and every year the country is acquiring a more Roman look. Does that remind you of what's happening in the United States today as a result of Vatican Council II? It says, and yet, we console ourselves by saying, quote, England is not converted, unquote. In other words, England is still Protestant. The Queen is still Protestant. The Parliament's still Protestant. The courts are still Protestant. The people are still Protestant and yet the cancer is growing. It's, a, it's like saying, wake us up when it gets serious. And James A. Wiley is, al is telling them it's already serious. England is slumbering. It's overconfident. It has underestimated the power of the Roman Catholic Church within the country. And it is apathetic about these concerns. And this is exactly the state that the United States is in today. He says, England's government is in the hands of the Roman Catholic members of the House of Commons. Okay? Now, what have, what have we learned throughout all these studies on Inquisition Update? Number one, the Roman Catholic Church is first and foremost a political juggernaut. It pretends to be a church, but it cannot recruit members as do the Protestant churches by, by proselytizing. One doesn't naturally, you know, migrate toward idolatry and things that are diametrically opposed to the Scripture. See, England had the Bible. England were Bible readers. The people of England were Bible readers. They weren't going to be easily uh, tricked into becoming Roman Catholics. So the only hope that Rome has is to gain control of the government. 
and then to make the government Roman Catholic and the civil laws consistent with Roman Catholic canon law that by little leaps and bounds within the political system of England to make the people Roman Catholic where they were whether they were converted to the Roman Catholic faith or not and then eventually when gained enough power and in, in influence in the government then to make Roman Catholicism the official religion of England and then to begin persecuting Protestants okay that you can just count on this this is the the strategy of Rome that's the very strategy they're using in England at this time that's the very strategy they're using in the United States today no one should be a, in the least bit uh, uncertain about what's happening in the country today because we have this history to go by. All right, first, Rome has quadrupled her members, quadrupled her funds, quadrupled her priesthood and her hierarchy, quadrupled her edifices. The United States is just just covered with Roman Catholic cathedrals, mostly in the, in the most powerful cities, New York and Washington, D.C. Her priesthood uh, mingle with the most powerful people in our government from the president on down to, to Supreme Court members, congressmen, senators. She runs the political system in this country, courts them all, chooses the candidates, promotes them, causes their Roman Catholic uh, pew sitters to vote for the, the candidate of the priest's choice, and, and the United States is just overrun in, pol in, pol in uh, Roman Catholic influence in the government. Okay, we can see in the United States today exactly what James A. Wiley is warning England about. <clears throat> he says, the Church of Rome has nearly quadrupled her priesthood. She has quadrupled her members, quadrupled her funds, quadrupled her edifices she is now as good as endowed in other words the church is filthy rich it's not under any threat no financial threat and you of course you know money is power so she's endowed she's a permanent fixture and it says every year the country is acquiring a more Roman look why because Rome controls Whenever Rome controls the government, the country becomes to look more and more Roman all the time. And, sa and he says, yet we console ourselves by saying, quote, England is not converted, unquote. Have you ever heard me say that America is a Protestant nation? I have said it. But that only breeds more apathy to the people who listen to this program of the threat that Rome play, plays in this country. America is becoming more and more and more Roman Catholic. It doesn't matter if you go to a Protestant church, if you can even find one, because after all, Protestantism believes the papacy is the Antichrist, and the Roman Catholic Church is the synagogue of Satan. It is the church of Satan that opposes the true church. Now you can't hardly <clears throat> you can't hardly find such a church in this country that believes this sort of thing. And so there are very few Protestants in this country. It's very, it's almost legitimate illegitimate to call this a Protestant country. It was it was Protestant in the colonial period and then after the the revolutionary war religious liberty was granted Catholics Catholics were granted religious liberty, whereas before they were oppressed. Now they have worked their way as slowly and surely in the United States as they did in Great Britain to occupy the controlling interest of our government. All the powerful seats in, 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 uh, in the government are Roman Catholic. And therefore, even, as, uh, even uh, multiplied by the effects of Vatican Council too, America is taking on a very Roman look. Okay? You you don't need fear. Islamic influence in this country, despite the fact the president claims openly this this ought to be a dead ringer. The president claims openly to be a Muslim. In video after video on YouTube I've seen the man, you know, embracing the Quran 
kissing and bowing down to a, a, a Muslim potentate in Saudi Arabia, all these statements about the Holy Quran, as he calls it, and even admitting in one point or another that he was Muslim, it's all a show. It's all a show. We don't have to worry about Islam. We have to worry about the establishment in this country, the Roman Catholic establishment, the majority sta uh, the majority influence in Washington, D.C. is Roman Catholic. And, and our, all of our attention is driven away from that fact because, number one, we've all been indoctrinated with the lie, the diabolical lie, the delusion that Roman Catholicism is Christianity. It is in no way Christianity, and my regular listeners can attest to this. And so all of our fears are, are pushed away from, from any concern at all about these quote-unquote Christians that dominate Washington, D.C., and all of our attention is put upon Islamofascists or, or uh, you know, radical fundamentalist Islamists, you know, Islamic terror. When we've got a much, much, much greater terror, a terror that is described to us in the Bible, to which we pay no attention. That's the reality in the United States of America. Now, Rome is growing by leaps and bounds in England at the time of the writing of this book. And if Muslims were flooding into England at this time, do you think James A. Wiley would be paying any attention to it? <laughs> no, because he knew who the real threat in England was. And he was describing it to his English brethren, and he's describing it to us. So we need not be indecisive or ambivalent or conflicting in our minds about who the greatest threat is. And we should not be led to sleep by saying that the Pope just as well be building castles in the sky. Because the papacy uses the government. The papacy is not at all concerned about your conversion to Roman Catholicism. <clears throat> He's not trying to woo you into the Roman Catholic Church to be baptized by a priest and to participate in the Mass and all that. No, that's yet to come. First, the papacy has to get control of your body. And then your spirit follows. He has to take you by force. He has to take you by coercion because you won't just voluntarily get up and go to the Roman Catholic Church to be baptized. You won't voluntarily sit down and eat the Jesus cookie and bow down and worship images and idols and worship dead saints and all the other abominations of the Roman Catholic Church. So Rome has one hope, and that is to get control of your body. And she does that through the civil government. And that's why it is of grave concern, no matter that, Rome, uh, that England at this time was universally Protestant, the government was Protestant, the people were free, Rome came in and started dividing up the land among her priests and just started setting up this government. And uh, the, the Englanders just shrugged their shoulders. He'd just as well be building sandcastles on the beach because he's never going to convert England. True, he's never going to convert the souls of Englanders, Protestants, into the Roman Catholic Church, but he is going to get control of the government <clears throat> and then by force impose Roman Catholicism. So we don't need to be... Uh, uh, we don't need to be confused at all about what's really going on in England. He says, yet we console ourselves by saying England is not converted. England's government is in the hands of the Roman Catholic members of the House of Commons. Okay, England's government is in the hands of Roman Catholic members of the House of Commons. 
Roman Catholics have taken over the government. In England, they were regarded as quote-unquote Christians. They were given freedom to participate in the government, and so they did. And they took control. Isn't that what they did in the United States? Exactly what they did in the United States. And he says, these again are in the hands of their priesthood. Question for my listeners. Class, what could one expect if a papist wins an election and then occupies a seat of power in Washington, D.C.? Will he, as he swore to do when he took his oath, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States and be a representative of the people in his state? No. Listen again what it says. These, again, are in the hands of their priesthood. See, this is something that is not understood in America, that Roman Catholics, true, devout Roman Catholics, are spiritually and temporally bound to their pope. He is their king. Yes, they, they patiently deal and submit to the legitimate government of this country, but they are first and foremost citizens of Rome. They are first and foremost subjects of the Holy Roman Pontiff. And his representative, his local representative, is the local priest or the local bishop or the local archbishop. The, the, the politicians in Washington, D.C. become politicians in Washington, D.C. because they answer to their priest. They obey their priest. And they promote the laws that their priest write. That their pri- the priests literally write the laws. How do we know this? Georgetown University, Fordham. These are the most prestigious Roman Catholic universities in the country, and they all ha- they all have law classes. They offer law degrees. They tr- they train lawyers, and they also write laws. And they submit these laws that they write in the Jesuit universities to their Roman Catholics in the Congress. And they propose these legislations. They debate these legislations. And they pass these legislations. And all of the laws that are written in these Jesuit universities by Jesuit priests and Jesuit students promoted in Congress by Roman Catholics subservient to these priests, pass into law Roman Catholic canon law. And it's only the the talent of these priests in these Jesuit universities to use terms in their legislation that don't tip off uh, people like you and me into the realization that this is just Roman Catholic canon law. They use different language. They go about things a different way. The laws don't seem to be ecclesiastical in their tenor, but they achieve an ecclesiastical goal. In other words, you and I are made subjects of the Roman pontiff indirectly because the laws that are promulgated in Washington, D.C. are, in effect, Roman Catholic canon law. The effect that they have upon you is to make you obey the canon laws of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, James A. Wiley understands the system that Rome uses. And James A. Wiley is telling his fellow patriots in England Protestants that England is taking on a distinctly Roman look. England is becoming Roman Catholic. The Pope builds castles in the air, but he has influence on the ground. That's what he's doing in America today. We'll be back right after this.
years ahead of the dominant media. FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's CrossTheBorder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Cancelled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven-year tribulation deception, true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast, and the mark of the beast, and the truth about God's chosen people, and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left-behind paradigm of future events. Get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's CrossTheBorder.org. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. Okay, welcome back from the break. You're listening to the second half hour of Inquisition Update on First Amendment Radio. If you'd like to support the program, please support First Amendment Radio, who sponsors it. And if you'd like to contact me, please do so by email. My email address is tom at cwaves.us. Always enjoy to hear from my listeners. And uh, questions, comments, suggestions on what we might do next on Inquisition Update. We've got a long way to go in this book, and I... My commentary is uh, making the book even longer, but this is priceless education. This is priceless education. You cannot put a price on Protestant education. And it's free here at Inquisition Update. Whatever God grants me in the way of knowledge, Protestant knowledge, I give to my listeners for free. So support First Amendment Radio and keep it on the air. Now... Here's what it says. England's government is in the hands of the Roman Catholic members of the House of Commons. Remember, all this started when a few Catholics began to whine and moan, you've got all these anti-Roman Catholic laws in the books. I know you don't enforce them, but why don't you take them off the books? They're a disgrace to you. They're an insult to us. We want Christian unity. And so... They said, well, we'll take them off the books. Those that we leave on the books, we won't enforce. And by the way, we'll especially let you bring the Pope's bulls and encyclicals and pastoral letters into the country. And so they immediately set up a papal government. And that didn't wake up England. 
now, at the time of the writing of this book, the House of Commons is controlled by Roman Catholics. That's just how fast the cancer grew. He says England's government is in the hands of Roman Catholic members of the House of Commons. And that didn't make England too concerned. They kept on sleeping. Okay? And he says these again, these Roman Catholic members of the House of Commons that control it, these are in the hands of their priesthood. Okay? And they represent a foreign potentate in Rome. You see how it works? <clears throat> and to that priesthood, the priesthood that controls these members of the House of Commons, which controls the House of Commons, you might just as well say that the House of Commons, the Parliament of England, was controlled by the Roman Catholic priesthood. Never mind that the Queen is still on her throne and she's Protestant. The House of Commons, that which represents the people in the government, is controlled by the priests, the Roman Catholic priests. And he says, to that priesthood, neither pension, money, nor money's worth can be denied. That means that they were being publicly supported. And it says the nation in both its religious and its worldly or secular sections, its t temporal sections, is sleeping its quiet sleep. To anyone who would rouse it by unwelcome prognostications, it mutters in its sleep, quote, go thy way, bigot, for this time. Come back and call me when England is converted, unquote. Now let me tell you, my listeners, when they write me, you hear no such thing. In other words, no one, no one writes to Tom Fress at Inquisition Update an email and says, go your way, bigot. Come back another day. Come back when, it, when the United States is converted to Roman Catholicism. Most of the email I get from my listeners if they be not just simple questions to clarify something, are, now I'm getting it. You're really starting to make sense to me now. Okay? That's the bulk of the, of the, of the, of the content of the, of the emails that I get from my listeners. But <clears throat> I've got years and years of experience talking about these things and reading these very books on amateur radio. And for those who don't know what amateur radio is, it's just like shortwave radio, only uh, it has the coverage of shortwave radio, but it's for little people like you and me. And it's non-commercial. You can't solicit money. You can't, it's, it's simply private or rather, well, it's public. It's very public. Anybody can tune in to an amateur radio frequency and listen. But you can't sell things. You can't promote things. I mean, it's, just, it's just radio for the common man. Shortwave. You know, people say, well, Tom, you ought to be on uh, shortwave radio. Well, I am already. I'm on amateur radio. My signal though it's uh, the legal limit 1,500 watts for, uh, for amateur radio, my signal can be heard all over the 48 states. And so I read and talk about the very same things on amateur radio that I do in these books on Inquisition Update. And the common response, if it's just not outright hatred and threats from people who are listening who also have amateur radio licenses who can make transmissions and talk to me, if they're not outright threats, there is, there, it's like, well, Tom, you know, you're a bigot. You've you got something against the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church doesn't control our government. That's ridiculous, Tom. The papacy, the, the priests don't control anything in this country. After all, they're pedophiles. They've been thoroughly discredited 
and they they don't have any money. They don't have any. You always see Roman Catholic priests, you know, begging for money, and uh, you know, Tom, you know, just just leave us alone. Go your way, bigot. Come back when the United States is converted. You say Rome's trying to take over the United States. That's ludicrous, Tom. You, you, you're dreaming. You, you got just something, you know, do you get the flavor? I mean, it's just absolutely mindless. Nobody takes the opportunity to research anything I say on ham radio. Just total opposition. And if there was anybody on ham radio who really understood what I was saying and was seriously researching themselves uh, for themselves these things, they would never dare admit it on the air because then they would be subjected to the same sorts of persecutions and ridicule and defamation and threats that I am. So for the most part, amateur radio has taken a sideline here at Inquisition Update, and I've focused all of my efforts on people who have eyes to see and ears to hear. But the sentiment of the general population of this country is most accurately represented by the, the, the response I get on ham radio. In my email box, I hear from Bible-reading Christians and, and, and people who are reading along with me these books. My listeners have a clue. My listeners are listening, and they're responding, and they're backing up what they hear on Inquisition Update with their own research. To them, I have a voice. To them, I'm received well. But they don't represent the masses in this country. My listeners on Inquisition Update are an extreme minority of the population of this country. The general population of this country is represented vividly on ham radio, and it is exactly the opposite. They don't want to hear this. They don't want any political or religious talk on ham radio because it's so controversial. They don't want anybody to wake them up from their sleep. They like things just the way they are. They don't want anybody rocking the boat, and they especially don't want uh, Christians being divided. Oh, yes, I hear that one all the time. He's trying to divide the brethren. Trying to divide the brethren. They don't have a clue. Okay? And so, this is the very attitude that James A. Wiley is exposed to with all of his warnings. The general population of England, though it was Protestant, you can't say that about the United States, but at the time of the writing of this book, England was, was overwhelmingly Protestant, and they were calling James A. Wiley a bigot. What do you got against the Roman Catholic Church, Wiley? See, they'd forgotten all their history. They'd forgotten what Protestantism was all about. Why had they forgotten what Protestantism was all about? The only answer I have is that futurism had already done some damage in England. They no longer believed that the papacy was the Antichrist and that the local bishop and archbishop weren't the representatives of Antichrist. They weren't trying to establish any government that was a threat to the Protestant government. Go! We're going back to sleep, James A. Wiley. Come back when England is converted. Then maybe we'll listen to you. And the same sentiment is dominant in the United States today. You are blessed of God. Let me talk to my listeners a minute. You are blessed of God. Truly have received a gift from God Almighty. It is my firm belief that God has reached down and touched your life in making the information that we share here on Inquisition Update comprehensible in your mind. Because what you are learning here on Inquisition Update is immediately rejected by the masses in this country. 
if you listen to Inquisition Update and your spirit is pricked with conviction and you're beginning to see for yourself the very things that James A. Wiley is seeing in England, I believe, it is my firm belief, that you have been blessed by God Almighty, that you have been given eyes to see and ears to hear. And it thrills me to no end. It thrills me to no end when I hear from a listener who says, now I'm getting it. Because I know you couldn't get it if it were not for the, the witness of the Holy Spirit. The truth rings with a certain ring that cannot be denied to those who can hear the ring. And you've been given the ability to hear it. And it's my pleasure to continue to ring this bell. Now he says, we concluded with the, with the, the statement, come back and call me when England is converted. Okay, that's the cynical response that I get from the general public of the United States of America. Call me. You know, let's talk again when the United States is converted to Roman Catholicism. In the meantime, you're a bigot. Don't bother me. All right, get off ham radio. We don't need your kind here. All right, but it says, James A. Wiley says, nor will this be long. That is, England being converted to Roman Catholicism. It won't be long before England is converted to Catholicism. He says, what with the continual flow of Romanists from Ireland, what with the increasing manufacture of papists in the Puseyite, in the Puseyite camp, remember the Puseyites were members of the <clears throat> Protestant church in England at the, at the time, who were being influenced by the the Roman Catholic uh, uh, presence of the pape of the uh, the priestly pre uh, the, the, let me just say it this way the Jesuit presence in the Protestant seminaries that were trying to promote the idea of transubstantiation that the that that the communion service was literally the mass. It was a sacrifice, that the bread and wine were the literal blood, body, soul, and divinity of Christ, and that it was a sacrifice, okay? They're Catholics. Puseyites are Catholics in their belief, though they call themselves Protestants. All right? The border, <laughs> you're going to, this is going to blow your mind. The border of Great Britain was poor, was just as porous as ours, and Roman Catholics from Ireland were flooding into the country. Why? Because Rome was using them to Catholicize England. Just like she's using the Mexicans and the Venezuelans and all the, the southern, central, and South American people that are coming in through our border with Mexico are to help Catholicize the country. And he says, what with the flow, the, the continual flow of Romanists that is, Roman Catholics from Ireland, what with the increasing manufacture of papists in the Puseyite camp, and what with the recoil in favor of Rome from infidelity for to, to, for to weak and frightened minds, that church will appear the only real protection from and the only effectual bulwark against a universal skepticism. The progress of Rome will go on, not simply in an arithmetical progression. It will proceed in geometrical ratio. Okay? Rome is making real inroads in Protestant Great Britain. And he says the, ba the balance numerically is still in our favor. In other words, England is still predominantly Protestant. But from one hour to another, it tends toward equipoise. In other words, slowly but surely, the trend is that before long, England will be just as much Catholic as it is Protestant. Equipoise. Equal. Rome will be in parity. Rome will be in equality with Protestants. 
and he says the Roman community like the cave of Caucasus exhibits many a footprint going in but it shows nothing coming out okay and he says one pervert today a dozen tomorrow and hundred the day after and with whom will the majority be found very soon? Quote, And surely the mountain falleth cometh to naught, and the rock is removed out of its place. Unquote. James A. Wiley just said, Protestantism will be destroyed in England if the trend continues. You must return to your Protestant beliefs or Rome will rule your country lock, stock, and barrel. That is what James A. Wiley is telling his, his Protestant listeners in England. And that's exactly what Inquisition Update has been telling you since the beginning of this program years ago. Just as surely as the mountain falling comes to naught and the rock is removed out of its place, Protestantism will be destroyed and replaced in this country by Roman Catholicism. The country will become Catholic. The government will be, and here I am still, I, I imagine Nicholas is probably pulling his hair out. The United States is Catholic today. Now, yes, there are many Protestant, self-proclaimed Protestant churches, but they believe Roman Catholic doctrine. They universally either believe in preterism, that the Antichrist was a, a figure of the long-distant past that was, that was done away with, already conquered, and the Holy Roman em em Empire through the popes had replaced it. The kingdom of heaven is the Roman Catholic Church. Or they are futurists and believe that the, pap that the Antichrist is not the papacy at all, nor the history of the popes the office of the papacy. That's not the Antichrist. The Protestants were wrong. What futurism teaches is the Antichrist is a single individual that comes just before Christ's return. He's not a factor in the world today, and we're not to be concerned about him. We're just supposed to unite with Roman Catholicism and make the world Catholic. That's, that's the majority of the churches in this country. Like I say, you can't count on... Uh, uh, you can't count... You can't, well, there are just no Protestant churches left in the country. P true Protestantism is like hen's teeth. It's like trying to find, a, a, you know, a needle in a haystack. If there was any church in the United States today that proclaimed, as I do every morning on Inquisition Update, that the papacy is the Antichrist, the papacy is the Antichrist, the Protestant reformers were right, the ecumenical movement, Vatican Council II, was an apostasy against Christ and a union of Christians toward the Antichrist Church while well, he'd be shut up as a bigot. He wouldn't be allowed to preach those things from a 501c3 pulpit. And so they just don't. If there are any Protestants in this country, they're very secretive about their beliefs. So how much influence can they have? How much influence can they have in their own lives if they live the life of a coward? Nobody wants to be called a bigot. But I wear it as a badge of honor, divine honor, to tell the truth, even if it hurts, even if it makes me my listener's enemy. That's what I must do. I must tell the truth, as painful as it is, as potentially dangerous as it is to myself, my wife, and my very life. <clears throat> but there's no room for retreating in this country. He says, but from one hour to another, it tends toward equipoise. The Roman community, like the cave of Caucasus, exhibits many a footprint going in, but it shows not a single one coming out. All right? That's the way of the United States today. If it doesn't repent of this ecumenical movement, if it doesn't return to Protestantism, it's toast. The only thing that we can look forward to from this point on is the return of Christ and persecution, real persecution. 
persecution like has not been experienced in the history of this country. And I don't intend to be destroyed with a rag in my mouth. I don't intend to go down silently. James A. Wiley's made the same determination in his country at the time of the writing of this book. He says, one pervert today, a dozen tomorrow, a hundred the day after, and with whom will the majority be found very soon? Quote, and surely the mountain falleth, cometh to naught, and the rock is removed out of its place, unquote. Eloquent words to describe the fall, the complete fall of Protestantism in Great Britain. That's what James A. Wiley predicted. If Britain didn't wake up, if Britain didn't return to their Protestant understanding. He says, and when the mountains of our Protestantism has fallen with this ceaseless corroding and trickling down of its substance, and we go back and cry to a slumbering nation, quote, awake, arise, we shall be answered, it's too late now. England is converted. The question is, not what the Pope understands by the restoration of the Roman Catholic hierarchy in England, but what we understand by it. So do many most confidently argue as if this were decisive of the whole matter. This, doubtless, is a true canon of interpretation in ordinary cases. But those who so oraculous, uh, uh, oracularly enunciate it and so confidently rely upon it, in this case, totally misapply it. They fail to take into account, because they do not or will not understand it, the, per the peculiarly subtle genius of the Roman Catholic Church with which they are dealing, and the marvelous efficacy which she attributes to all her arrangements. The Church of Rome is a church of shams, in one sense. But in another sense, she is above all other churches a church of realities. Is As a moral and spiritual organization, she is a sham. As a political and earthly confederation, she is a compact, energetic, terrible reality. There is not under the sun a greater contrast than there is betwixt the necromantic and illusory, and illusory character of the agency which she employs for her spiritual ends, and with which, nevertheless, she leads a great many clever people, as we say, by the nose, and the intense common sense and the almost indeed we may say altogether superhuman knowledge of of human nature especially in its weaknesses with which she labors to attain her political and worldly objectives she never does anything without a meaning and that meaning she almost always contrives to make good Rome is going to take over the United States of America. Yes, Nicholas, Rome has already taken over the United States just as she attempted to do in Protestant Great Britain because the people would not listen to the sentinel blowing the horn. We'll see you tomorrow on Inquisition Update. We'll continue to blow it loud and long.